In this lesson, I'm going to talk about a radical function and what the graph of a radical function looks like. So let's start with the definition here. It says a radical function has the form y is equal to the square root of f of x, where f of x is a function. So you could take any function, take the square root, and your result is a radical function. So to describe what the graph of a radical function looks like, I am giving you two graphs here. So my first graph is a linear y is equal to 1 one half x minus one, when you take the square root of this function, your result is this curve, which is represented by the red line. And that is the graph of the square root of one half x minus one. So there you go. There's my original linear function. And then there is my radical function, the red curve. So for to compare these two graphs here, is I want to describe to you two different things here. And starting with the domain and the range of my radical function. So if we're going to define the domain, we're looking at all the x values that define this curve. So taking a look at the red curve, notice that it starts at 2 and extends all the way to the right until infinity. So therefore, the domain of this graph is everything greater than or equal to 2. So that was uh, that's from the graph, but if you wanted to find this algebraically, take a look at the original function. Now you know from your your previous math classes, you cannot take you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So you're going to use that property to find the domain. So this expression one half x minus one cannot be negative or it's undefined. So set it up one half x minus one cannot be negative. Therefore, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. If we solve this inequality for x, my result is going to be as follows: one half x is greater than or equal to positive 1. And then if I want to bring the 2 over, my result is going to be x is greater than or equal to 2. So this inequality matches the domain that we got up here from your graph. So there are two ways you could determine the domain. You could take a look at the graph, or you could take a look at the function that was given to you. And you know you can't take the square root of a negative number, so you use that property to find the domain. Okay, so I'm going to erase this because of one more thing we have to define here is the range. So that was my domain. Take a look at the range here. It starts at 2, 0, okay, and it keeps going up. It keeps going up and up and up and up and up, and it keeps going until infinity. So therefore, we don't have any negative y values, so all my y values are defined greater than or equal to zero. So that would be my range. Okay, so moving on, I want to describe to you the invariant points. So the invariant points are the points of intersection between these two curves. So if I look at the points of intersection, I have two of them. I have one right here, and I have a second one right here. So this one's two, zero, and this one is four, one. And those are my invariant points. In fact, if I was to generalize this, the invariant points occur, okay, so this is in general here, in general, my invariant points occur when y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. So this is the general case when it comes to invariant points. It's always going to be occurring at y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. So that is my little introduction to uh, a radical function.